guys, it's me, the stupendous stupendous with my mighty pen ultimate. Don't forget to subscribe for some awesome adventures. See you then. Hi girls and boys, it's me, Miss Booksy here at Cool School. Can you find all the elephants in these stories? Hey kids, it's time for a brand new episode with the stupendous stupendous and his mighty pen ultimate. In today's episode, Drew and his buddies take a trip to the zoo, but something doesn't smell right. I'm telling you, it's that free-range chicken they're feeding us. Didn't want to discuss the elephant in the room. No, 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 not that kind of stink. Just wait and see. Maybe after the lions and the tigers and the bears. And the monkeys. Can't forget the monkeys. Hey, look, there they are. Aw, look how cute they are. <laughs> ah, oh, never mind. Monkeys are scarier than I remember. Hmm, that's weird. Monkeys aren't supposed to roar. Yeah, I've never heard of a monkey that roars. Wait a sec, is that a tiger chirping? Okay, I'm officially freaked out. Guys, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure that zebra over there is mooing. <coughs> Hold up, something's definitely not right here. These animal noises are all mixed up. He was right. Monkeys don't roar, tigers don't chirp, and zebras definitely don't moo. That's just basic nursery rhyme stuff. Someone's making these animals all confused and totally ruining zoo day. I better get to the bottom of this. Drew changed into his costume and went to investigate. Suddenly, he noticed a bunch of angry giraffes ramming into each other with their super long necks. Hmm, that's weird. I'll go see what's up. Way, way up. Whoa, I can get used to this view. Jerry, I told you this was a bad idea. Mooing zebras, chirping lions, only a matter of time before this zoo is all over the papers. All right, look, relax, all right? So they found a little different, big whoop. So the giraffes are the one behind this? Never would have guessed that one. Hey, did you hear that? Who goes there? I do. I am the stupendous stupendous. Huh, you ever see that guy? Uh, nope. Would definitely remember a giraffe with hair that good. Okay, still whatever. What are you hiding in the bushes for? Uh, I wasn't eavesdropping, if, if that's what you were thinking. Well, I wasn't until you just said that. Okay, fine, I was eavesdropping but only because I was trying to find out why all the animals are making the wrong noises. Uh-oh, people know, we're doomed. Okay, okay, it was us, but it was Jerry's idea. All right, listen up here, giraffe boy. We're sick and tired of listening to all the other animals make up their super cool sounds. Well, us giraffes can't make a sound at all. No, sir, look. Nada. So we used this cool voice vacuum machine that some girl sold me. She said we could suction up all the other animal noises and keep them for ourselves. A machine girl sold it to you? Yeah, about yay high, gray hair, kind of attitude -y. She said she vacuums up color for a living, but she was selling an old vacuum that works on voices too. Color vacuums? Had to be Grace Kale. Yeah, Grace, that was it. Anyway, the plant would have worked just fine until somebody got clumsy and knocked his long neck into the machine. Well, the voices flew back out and landed on the wrong animals. Ah. Everyone makes mistakes. Yours was a doozy. Okay, so this basically is just one big mistake. I can fix this. Just give me that machine. Whoa, hold up. We're gonna get those noises back in this machine and finally have noises of our own. There's nothing you can do to stop us, all right? Right, guys? Uh, well, I was actually just gonna uh, check out that tree over there. Make sure it uh, tastes good. Wait for me. Fine, I'll do everything myself, but don't think I'm sharing any voices with you guys. Jerry totally ended up hitting the wrong button and suctioning up Drew's voice. And you'll never guess where it landed. I am the stupendous stupendous. <laughs> Drew took out his mighty penultimate and he drew a giant hand. <laughs> Phew, never realized how much I like talking. You know, Jerry, I think you look really good in giant butterfly wings. We 
wait, 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 wait. No, hold on. Fa I, we can figure this out. Hey, that's no fair. I'm afraid of heights. Ah, no. See you never. With no time to spare, Chu switched on the voice vacuum machine, suctioned up all the animal voices, and released them back to their rightful owners. <laughs> Hey, good work, kid. Yeah, uh, you go enjoy those great animal noises with your buddies. Hmm, you know, there's this really cool noise that I think would sound great on you guys. This is awesome! Aw, thanks, Stu, the weird-looking giraffe boy. Hmm? All right! Hey, Drew! False alarm! The animals are back to normal again. Come on! Well, Drew saved the day again, kids. All the animals had their noises back, the giraffes got their own super cool noise, and Drew and his buddies had the best day at the zoo ever. Moral of the story, boys and girls, giraffes just want to be heard too. So don't be alarmed if you see a giraffe blowing a trumpet. Just go sing along. All right, kids, get ready. It's fairy tale time. Once upon a time. That's what we old folks say when we're not sure of the date. But way back when, there was an old man who built puppets. The kind with strings attached to their arms and legs and heads, called marionettes, actually. This man was a very lonely old man, and so he would build these puppets to keep him company. Pretty smart, actually. Well, one day, this old man built a puppet so amazing that it actually started to move on its own. Well, hi. Are you my papa? I sure am. And you are Pinocchio. Beautiful. What a lovely way to end a story. But that's not the end. For you see, a traveling circus came into town that day, which was run by the big bad wolf. And this wolf had gotten into the business of convincing children to run away with him and perform in the circus. But it wasn't as fun as that sounds. The wolf made them walk on a tightrope, which was really scary, and swing on the trapeze, which made them really dizzy, and brush lions' manes, which was really dangerous. Worst of all, they had to clean up after the elephants when they did their business. Sorry. But Pinocchio didn't know about any of that. He just wanted to see the show. Well, that night, the old man gave Pinocchio some money and asked him to run to the store to buy some milk. Okay, Papa. But he was going to buy a ticket to the circus instead. And because it was a lie, his nose started to grow. Well then, Pinocchio went to the circus and had the time of his life. But he saw all the other children in the crowd eating popcorn and cotton candy, and he was sad that he couldn't eat anything because he was made of wood. So after the show, just as the first star began to sparkle in the sky, he made a wish. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might turn into a real boy tonight. Well, the big bad wolf saw Pinocchio and thought that a wooden boy would be a great circus act. And he can use that giant nose to spin plates on top of. So he put on an old dress from the circus costume trunk and walked over to Pinocchio. So you want to be a real boy, eh? Wow, you heard my wish. Are you my fairy godmother? I sure am. To be a real boy, all you have to do is run away from home and join the circus. But Pinocchio didn't feel so good about that. He would miss his papa too much, and he knew his papa would miss him. In fact, the old man was probably wondering why he was taking so long to get that milk. I'm so thirsty. And besides, this fairy godmother looked a little odd. Why are your hands so fuzzy? And why are your ears so big? And why are your teeth so sharp? Wait a second. You're the big bad wolf, aren't you? Are you okay? What took so long? And then Pinocchio made the first real boy decision of his entire life. He told the truth. I used the money to go to the circus. The big bad wolf tried to get me to run away, but I just couldn't leave you. I'm sorry, Papa. 
It's okay, Pinocchio. I am disappointed, but you did the right thing. You came back, and you told the truth, and you said you were sorry. And because Pinocchio did that, his wooden nose went back to normal size, and then it turned into a real nose. And his wooden head, it turned into a real head. And he turned into a real boy. The old man was so happy, and they decided to celebrate. And they would have had cookies, but they were still out of milk. So they ate popcorn and cotton candy instead. Delicious. And that's the end of the tale. Let's see where those elephants were hiding. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Hey guys, we love playing when you post those find the difference comments. They're always so much fun. So let's see if you can find the difference in this Drew Pendis scene. We'll show you the video twice, then you tell us where the difference is. Here we go. With story time on the line, Drew got right into costume. Then he sketched a portal and jumped right into Miss Books' storybook. Sure is spooky out here. Okay, let's watch that scene again, but this time, see if you can find what's different. With story time on the line, Drew got right into costume. Then he sketched the portal and jumped right into Miss Books' storybook. Sure is spooky out here. So, did you spot the difference? It was right... here. That wasn't there before. Want to know what happens next in this adventure? Just keep watching. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty penultimate. In today's episode, Drew's got to fight something big to save something little. It was story time at Cole School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to read one of their favorite stories ever. Oh, hey, kids. Today we have a very exciting story to read, Little Red Riding Hood. Let's get started. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore a... Wait a second, something doesn't look right here. Hmm, well that's Little Red Riding Hood all right, but why isn't she wearing red? Hmm, I guess we could just call her Little Riding Hood. No, 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 that's not how the story goes. I've got to figure out what's going on here. With story time on the line, Drew got right into costume. Then he sketched the portal and jumped right into Miss Books' storybook. Sure is spooky out here. Oh no, my cape! Help! Hold on! Drupendus to the rescue! Oh, I wasn't expecting to see a young boy. It's mostly grandmas and scary wolves around here. I heard you scream. Did you need help with something? Yes! This scary villain lady just came out of nowhere and stole my red cape. She said something about loving colors. And she had this really cool color vacuum thing. Hmm, loves colors and has a color vacuum. I know who your problem is. Raise Kale, and she's not going to get away with this. Oh, thank goodness! I need that cape. Kind of hard to be Little Red Riding Hood without the Red Riding Hood part. Well, if I were a girl and a red cape and a forest, where would I go? Oh, how about Grandma's Cottage? That's where I like to go anyway. Good call. Here. Hop on. Whoa, cool. And off Drew rode with Little Red deep into the dark, scary forest until they reached Grandma's cottage. Then they peeked through the windows. There! That's her! And that's my cape! And that's my Grandma! I think. Come over here, dearie. Come to Grandma. Uh, you like have a really deep voice for an old lady? The better to greet you with. And like really big eyes. The better to see you with. Uh-oh, I know where this is going, and it's not good. Stop right there, both of you. Drew? Ah. What do you want, kid? I was just about to eat my dinner. We want my cape back. Another one? Where do you kids keep coming from? You can't just steal people's capes, Grace. Oh, yeah? And who's going to stop me? I am. The stupendous stupendous on behalf of my fellow caped crusaders. Ha! Huh. Well, I'm like not impressed, so scrap. I hereby demand that you return Little Red's cape immediately. Uh, yeah, what he said. 
or else. Ah! Well, when you put it that way, got a jet. Till next time, Drupus. BTW, you guys have some like great colors in your outfit. We gotta talk. We sure got our dad this time. That was awesome! Man, this thing is tight. Thanks for sketching me this awesome hoverboard, Drew. She totally fell for it. Wait a minute. I have to eat someone. Grandma doesn't want to be hungry. Hmm, I think I got a better idea. I'm on it. So Drew ran outside and sketched a full moon in the sky. I told you wolves like to do that. Animal Kingdom 101. Looks like he'll be busy for a while. You guys are the best! Couldn't have gotten my cape back without you. Nothing can stop us. Yeah! <laughs> Maybe that guy. We better head out while he's still distracted. Yeah, and Miss Booksy will be waiting to finish story time. Thanks, you guys. Anytime, Red. Now you better go find Grandma. Something tells me she'll be needing your help. Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore red. <laughs> and there it is, her red cape. You did it, Drew. You saved the story. That's what superheroes do. Well, kids, Drew and his buddy saved the day once again. Little Red got her cape back, and story time was right back on track. Moral of the story, boys and girls, always be wary of big bad wolves dressed as your grandma. And don't forget your cape next time you gotta fight off the bad guys. Hey, everyone. Remember when me and my friends were trapped in the toy store? There was that one toy that really scared me. Tell me in the comments which toy you think it is. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. Get ready, because today's episode isn't just fun and games. Drew and his friends were having a blast at a giant toy store. That is so cool. I wish I had this much room to play at home. I love how colorful all these animals are. I don't know. There's something kind of creepy about this one. I think he's cute. My name is Twinkle Bunny, and I love you. Hmm. Hey, sis, can I get this? Can I get this, Kara? Huh? 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 Please? Mom and Dad said you're not allowed to get any toys bigger than you are. Oh man. Attention, customers. The toy store is now closing. Please make your way to the exit. Please? Nope. Aw. That was so much fun. I can't wait to go back. Yay! Wait a minute. Where's Robbie? Hello? Anybody? He must still be in there. If we don't rescue him, he'll be locked in there all night. Kara, we'll be right back, okay? Uh-huh. This is a little bit spooky. I like things that are bright. I got this. Robbie, where are you? Robs! <laughs> ah! Robbie, you're okay! Woo! I'm so glad I found you guys. I was so scared. Wait a minute. Do you guys realize we have this whole toy store to ourselves? Hey, you're right. We can play with all the toys we want. This is the best day ever. Rawr. Whoa, I didn't realize this toy could talk. We can all talk. Ah. Rawr. Whoa, these toys are alive. It's true. When the store closes and the lights go off, we toys come to life. Pass me the ball. That is so cool. Can we play with you? Uh, I'm not sure if that's such a good idea. You better get out of here. Get out of here? Why? Because otherwise you'll be trapped here forever. Now that you know the secret of the toys, we can't let you leave. Ah, I knew that bunny was bad news. <laughs> run, kids, run. Everyone hop on a skateboard. Let's get out of here. Toys, after them. Don't let them escape. Uh-oh. What do we do? They come to life when the lights go up. So we've got to turn the lights back on. That could work. The switch should be right over. There. You're not getting away that easy. This is for all the times you ever broke a toy. Or lost one under your bed. Or you got too old to play with one. Quick, turn it on. Here we go. Oh no! Phew, 
That was a close one. Let's get out of here. Huh, that's weird. Thought I turned the light off. Oh well. They ain't paying me enough for this. <laughs> You're surrounded! Ah! Uh oh, kids. How are Drew and his friends going to get out of this one? It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his Mighty Pen Ultimate! Previously on Cool School, Drew and his friends were trapped in a toy store when a bunch of toys came to life. Now the toys want to keep them trapped in the toy store forever. How are they going to get out of this one? Anybody have any ideas? Drew, we could really use some super heroics by now. I'm on it. And that's when Drew became the stupendous stupendous. Oh yeah? Well, you're not the only one around here with special powers. <laughs> Uh-oh. Get ready, guys. We're going to have to battle them. Playtime is over. Yeah! Stop running. Get back here. You're going to be trapped here forever. And it's going to be fabulous. I've got to distract them. Look at this. It's an ultimate Mega Mall play set. O-M-G. Come on, Barbie. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> The Slinky's natural weakness. Oh, ramp. Works every time. Oh, no. What are you gonna do now? Yes, science! Ah, smoke bomb. I'm gonna give you a big bear hug. first name is. Kids, I'm so glad I found you. You saved us. How did you know we were here? Your sister Kara called me for help. Duh. How irresponsible do you think I am? Come on, everybody. Let's go home. Boy, am I glad to be home. Bobby, look! Grandma got me a present! Moral story, kids, don't get separated from your parents in a store, or you could get stuck there all night. Oh, and watch out for evil bunnies. Hey, everybody, we see that you loved our first Find the Difference episode. So here's another one. See if you can spot the difference in Drew versus the ninjas. We'll watch the same scene twice, and you see if you can spot the difference. Oh, no! There were evil ninjas everywhere. OK. Let's watch that scene again, but this time, see if you can find what's different. Oh no! There were evil ninjas everywhere! Did you find the difference? It was right... over here! Want to know what happens next in this adventure? Just keep watching! It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his Mighty Pen Ultimate! In today's episode, Drew's gonna battle evil ninjas. Ouch! It was a brand new morning at Cole School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait for story time with Miss Booksy. Hey, kids! Did you guys read any books over the summer? You betcha! Fairy tales, history, medieval art, and science! I read 10 comic books and the back of a lot of cereal boxes. There was a brand new student in the class. His name was Akiko. He moved all the way from Japan. Yeah, I'm a ninja, and I'm here to protect you guys from some evil ninjas that are going to attack Cool School. Evil, evil ninjas? ninjas? Ah! <laughs> You've got a really good imagination, huh? Actually, no. Bad ninjas are coming. Like, big time. You guys are going to need some help. 
You want me to protect you, right? Yes, I do. I do. Come on, Robbie. There's no such thing as ninjas. This new kid has a great imagination. But suddenly... Um, is it supposed to be nighttime already? Oh, man, this is not good. Who goes there? It's me, the scariest, evilest ninja that ever lived. I told ya. Hey, I wasn't done yet. <laughs> okay, now I'm done. Ah! Oh no, there were evil ninjas everywhere. Drew was thinking quickly got into costume. He sketched one weapon after another to fight them off, but they were really fast ninjas. Time for a hydropower blaster. Hey, okay, it's time for a supersonic frisbee. Hey, uh, Akiko, help? Thought you'd never ask. Hey, kid with the really cool pen, can you draw a katana? Ooh, ooh, a katana is a classic Japanese sword used for fighting that looks like this. Wow, that is cool. Yeah, yeah, woof, yeah, your turn. Uh, what now? Swing it. Well, that's one way to do it. This ninja stuff is fun. Okay. Not that much fun. Okay, Miss Booksy, you're coming with me. Drew, draw something. Quick, sketch me an extra long rope. <laughs> hey, let me out of here. You won't get away with this. Time to reveal yourself, evil ninja. If it isn't the evil Ray Blake, I should have known. I don't care about your first day of cool school. All I want is Miss Booksy. Mean Miss Hooksy has been making us read textbooks and romantic poetry and a whole bunch of other boring stuff. I want our story time to be fun too. Why'd you have to dress up as a ninja? Uh, they're just cool. Bad guys gotta keep it fresh. And what about you guys? Well, Ray promised us we'd get to meet the Ninja Turtles if we helped him. Those guys, but they're the slowest ninjas in town. No chance. Dude, they're turtles. Okay, listen up. We'll let all of you go if you promise to leave cool school and stop trying to steal Miss Booksy. She's our storyteller. No chance. I'll just erase this rope band. Looking for this? Why, I yada. Run, Ninja, run! Ugh! I'll be back, Drufus! And more evil than ever! <laughs> Sorry we didn't believe you about the ninjas. No biggie. No one ever listens to the ninja in the room. It's time to read Chapter 9 of Beauty and the Beast. A beast? What? Where? It's just a story, Akiko. You can relax for this one. Oh, right. <laughs> well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. With the help of his ninja partner in crime, moral of the story, boys and girls, beware of evil ninjas trying to steal your teacher. And the next time you gotta defeat a ninja, remember, bring an eraser. <laughs>